An aneurysm of the brain is a, essentially a weak spot in the blood vessel in the brain. It usually happens at this point where the vessel divides into two branches, so-called bifurcation. And uh, for unclear reasons that we're still not fully understanding of, um, perhaps a jet of blood flow hits that spot a little harder and um, it tends to weaken the vessel and that can actually slowly form into a small bubble that you know, under certain circumstances or if it continues to grow can rupture. Most aneurysms are usually asymptomatic. Uh, people don't know they have them. When aneurysms get to a certain size, they may start to compress normal structures in the brain or other normal nerves. Um, in that case, you may actually have some symptoms related to that. So if an aneurysm was large and compressing on the optic nerve, you may complain of decreased vision or some blurriness or you may have headache, or you may have double vision, uh, and so on. But uh, the majority of aneurysms are actually too small to cause any symptoms, and on occasion they can cause headache. When an aneurysm does rupture, patients complain of the absolute worst headache of their life. They complain of neck stiffness and sensitivity to light. More importantly is sometimes you can have a, a small, minor version of that, where the aneurysm may have what's called a sentinel leak or a tiny little bit of a leak that can cause a bad headache, that can persist for a couple of days and then goes away. That's quite an important uh, complaint that needs to be uh, taken to your doctor because it may be a sign of an impending actual significant rupture. We unfortunately still don't know what causes aneurysm to proceed to rupture. Uh, we know that smoking is, is bad and can actually weaken the blood vessels uh, in the brain and can sometimes contribute to moving towards uh, an aneurysm rupturing. There are other medical factors such as the family history. There is a genetic component to aneurysms forming and aneurysms rupturing. Obviously we can't control your, your family background or your genes, but that has implications on screening some of the other family members and having perhaps a closer follow-up. And so it's very important to explain to the patients the natural history of aneurysms, you know, that up to anywhere from 0.5 to 2% of the population harbors uh, an aneurysm of some size in some location. But it's important to know whether there's another family member that may have been affected by an aneurysm or a sudden rupture or possibly a sudden stroke because the presence of two family members with aneurysm means that the family is likely to have what's called a familial aneurysm history and that has significant implications for the extended family everybody who is uh, blood related to you would need to undergo a screening with an MR angiogram the two ways of treating aneurysms uh, include the conventional uh, established microsurgical clipping. In that procedure, we actually perform an operation under the microscope and uh, actually isolate the vessel that leads to the aneurysm under the microscope and basically place a clip at the neck or mouth of the aneurysm, thereby preventing the blood pressure from reaching the weak spot. In the last 15 years, uh, there has been a new uh, method of treating aneurysm that is much less invasive, and that's one of the things that we specialize uh, in here at Tufts Medical Center. It's a process called coiling, and in that, uh, rather than doing open surgery and putting a clip on the outside of the aneurysm, you actually travel through the vessel, starting from the femoral artery in the groin, and actually fill the aneurysm from the inside, so that you can actually treat the aneurysm without having to have an actual physical incision, you know, on, on your scalp or actually have a formal craniotomy. Obviously not all aneurysms are um, candidates for that kind of treatment, but increasingly uh, with the use of special uh, devices, um, special coils and special stents that can actually help buttress the coil in position, uh, the majority of aneurysms are actually treatable in that way. Our approach at Dust Medical Center is that we, we like to spend time with you and try to get all the information that, that we have that's available out there in terms of the best latest research on the natural history, the method of treatment, the tools that are available. We're one of the busy centers for doing uh, stent-mediated coiling, which is 
the most advanced form of uh, endovascular treatment. And we also uh, treat aneurysms by uh, conventional microsurgical clipping as well. So we present all of these options to you. They each have their benefits and drawbacks. And also uh, look at the risk of treatment of, of these aneurysms and, and come up with the best treatment plan for you.